Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Um, I happen to be British and as such one of my favourite pastimes is to grumble. We Brits, we love to grumble. We love our apple crumble and our ample grumble. See what I did there. Um, we love to grumble about everything, particularly the weather, which is awful, I might add. Uh, today it's raining, it's cold, uh, it's still dark because the days are shorter and so on and so forth. See, I'm doing it already. We grumble and then of course when it turns sunny we're like, it's too hot, it's I'm muggy and uh, oh, the sun's in my eyes and so on. We love to grumble about the weather, we love to grumble about people. And our passage today says, don't do it, don't grumble about other people. Um, James, um, Jesus' half-brother, in his letter, um, November the 21st today, uh, James chapter 5 verse 9 says this, Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Well, that's pretty serious, isn't it? The judge is standing at the door. Um, Jesus said something quite similar, you know, don't judge others for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If you grumble against others, you'll be judged by that same standard by God. God will say, well, right back at you, Phil. I feel convicted because I've already grumbled about someone today. Um, and, and I think we don't really realise just how much we do grumble about others and how we say negative things. And, and we tend to think it's not a very serious sin. You know, it's a low level sin. It's hardly a sin at all, really. It's like a white lie. It's a white, a white grumble. I like grumble and we just see in our lives this grumble mix. But actually the judge is standing at the door. God cares about this because grumbling essentially is a symptom of ingratitude, lack of grace in our lives. And uh, we, we do it all the time. And it, we just we say, don't we, oh, I was just letting off some steam. But actually that steam is acidic and corrosive of peace, joy, love and grace and gratitude in our lives. And other people around us are affected by it. It's like they like become like passive smokers. They breathe this vile, toxic stuff in. So we need to be aware of that and de-grumble our lives. Famous example in the Bible, of course, is Moses and the people of Israel. They've just been delivered miraculously from Egypt and all they do is grumble. We're going to die out here. So God gives them water and, and manna from heaven. and say, we're, we're missing meat. We don't have any meat. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It's like quite onomatopoeic, isn't it? Grumbling, We don't have any meat. And so God rains thousands of quail down upon them. And uh, up to their ears in quail. Oh, we're fed up with quail. All we ever eat is this gourmet quail. And God gets fed up with it because it's a symptom of ingratitude. And he wants us to edit this out of our lives. So challenge today really, is, it's a bit of a, a fun challenge in a way, but to go 24 hours without grumbling, about saying anything negative about any other person. Um, and that's a challenge indeed. I've written DG on the back of my hand to remind me to de-grumble. You might want to do the same. Um, and in fact, if we bump into each other, we can say, oh, we're part of the DG club. It's like a secret society. So let's have some fun with it. But it's a serious, got a serious edge to it. Let's not be grumblers. Let's be people of gratitude and grace.